Now pretend you don't know this. You're just no one. Okay. You know, you're just we're just talking. Right. Now imagine you're an adult. Imagine your children or your children's children or any child that's sitting here right now. Just use your imagination. Now, in their mind they're educated. And most adults too, right? Alright, so let's look up black. And I'm going to also show you that most people don't even know how to use a dictionary. Less more know how to read. I'm going to show you why and how. But most of the unabridged dictionaries would be this size. Or those double dictionaries that you see. And unabridged means not tampered with. That's, to put it simply, it means they didn't edit the history out of it. They didn't water it down. They ain't fronting. If you want to get educated, you don't get paperback dictionaries. If you got paperback dictionary, use it for the bird cage. Because you got to know who the mom is. Because the mom is the truth of the word. That's what an etymology is. The etymon is what? The true origin, meaning, and definition of a word, including indicators of morphology from one language to another. That's basic rule of reading. Third grade stuff. The people need to be given fundamental tools mm -hmm. for critical thinking. And what I was talking about earlier is the etymon. Yeah. All right, now this is the etymon. Facts. Etymon. Etymons. The radical or root form of a word. The primitive signification of a word. Now that is... Funk and Wagner's new practical dictionary. Now, this is the American Heritage Dictionary. Etymon. The earliest form of a word that can be discovered from which its modifications are derived. Latin origin of a word from Greek etymon, true sense of a word. Etymology from etymos, true, real, akin to etios, true. So therefore, one of the keys to giving our people some keys to learning how to critically think, if they don't know the principle of the etymon, which is why they, the Europeans reduced our capacity to educate ourselves by force because they know that if you don't know the atom of a word which is the etymon mm -hmm. that they can put connotations on it later and you will try to, to define what you think things mean by the connotations and not the denotations. Third grade grammatication is denotation, connotation and learn that rule. Denotation is where the word or definitions that absolutely apply to the word in fact. Connotations are fads or misuses of words what is generally accepted, but in fact is not what the word means. Not unlike when, when Mike did the record, you know, the Bad album years ago. Bad in, in that connotative means good or slick, smart, tight. But, but in its denotation, it means negative. Do you understand? Now there's eight parts of speech. Eight parts of speech, right? Mm -hmm. So it's eight parts of speech. Sure. So now let's go to third grade grammatication. Third grade grammatication is a classification of words. And so you have eight parts of speech, don't you? Right. Now, when you have in the third grade, they usually give those children at least start them off with two. And they'll give them nouns and adjectives. No, they start with nouns and adjectives because they usually relate to things about the child with their name and or their clothing. And they'll say, well, little brother, what's your name? And the child says his name, and they'll make the distinction between nouns and proper nouns. And then they'll say, well, sister, what kind of shirt? What do you have on? Is that a shirt, a coat, or a blouse? And then you will identify what it is, identify what it is as an object, a thing, and you will not call what you have on a coat, would you? So now that makes the other children recognize to start making discriminative thinking. Meaning that law and truth is specific. It is really not general. 
So they have to start you off when you're young to understand that. So they'll say, what is that you have on here? And you say, a shirt. Then they'll say, what color is the shirt? Blue. What color is this shirt? Oh, uh, that's not black, and it's not tan, and it's not gray, and it's not green, but it got all of them. So that's called plaid, isn't it? Yeah, and now the children have another level of understanding. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Then you say, what's that shirt? It, it, it's modeled with color, that means colors are blending. Then you start talking, naming the colors, but it remains a shirt or blouse, doesn't it? So the identity of that piece of garment is a shirt or blouse. It's not a coat, is it? Huh? But you can call it a coat, can't you? But it ain't a coat, is it? Hmm? And this can come in red, right? White? Right? Green? But is, it, is that a blue or is it a shirt? What you have on, is that a blue or is it a shirt? Now, grown people who they call boys and girls don't know that distinction because they lack education. So you take, you take what you call Afrocentric taught people that don't know that that's a shirt and they'll call that a blue. And they do the same thing with people because they have the mentality of a child. They're called minorities. Minors. And so they would think that is a blue and try to give it legitimacy and get mad at people who don't go along with that game. So now let's look at the dictionary and see what black means then, since they want to justify what that means. Black. So the first thing you do before you go into what you call definition or the etymology history of the word, i.e. what it means, define it, you must first categorize it in the seat of language where it belongs. Correct? Are you following me? So now we have not gone into definition. Black's an adjective. Black is an adjective. So therefore, is it, if it's an adjective, can it be the identity of any human being? No. Does it take a rocket scientist to figure that out? Uh, See, all right, now, hold on, let's keep it. Let's, no, let's keep it. Just, right, right. All right, so it's an adjective. Right. This is before we even get down here. We're not even going into the linear adjective, right? Mm -hmm. Then you see these brackets here? That's called the etymology. So, third grade grammar. First thing, part per speak, part part, right? right. So it's, it's, an, it's an adjective. So is an adjective a person, place, thing, or idea? No, it's describing. All right. So, so now you're going to the etymology. What's the first thing is right there? Me. What is me? I mean, huh? All right, that's Middle English. So now let's go to Middle English. I'm going to show you how simple this is. And I'm, what I'm showing you is why they talk about our people can't read. Right. It's by, by going through this lesson. Keeping it simple, isn't it? And it can't be denied, can it? Here you go, Middle English. So now, you see Middle English? And what does it say here? 1125 and about 1475. So you're dealing with roughly, roughly 1100 to close to 1500, right? Mm -hmm. So now you put the math, math on it. Now the scholar knows that that word doesn't go back in linguistics beyond 1100 essentially 1125. So now when a scholar sells to your children the ancient black gods of Egypt, a scholar already knows that he's lying. But a child who can't read accepts that, don't they? Because they can't damn count. So you, so you understand why they keep saying black people can't read? Because they've been trained like rats and don't know it. Then they're arrogant because they keep on calling their ignorance spirituality. Then they wonder why the civilized world keep rejecting them, now they're racist. Racist to human species. See how we've been played? They say black people can't read because if black people can read, because they, they can't know, read. They would know that they weren't black. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? I did. And so now we got your babies here, your little girl and your little boy. Now they gotta grow up in this world competing and you're the father, and if you don't know that it's eight parts of speech, and they're supposed to get it in the third grade, what chance do they have to compete with the real world when they can't even read, but yet they can pronounce words? 
And they wouldn't even know that they can't read because they think that because they can pronounce the words and do some ebonics that they got it covered. Now notice that we haven't even gone into any linear entries. And understand, like, we're not moving right along because we're doing a class. This is not like a lecture. We're doing a class. We're going to make sure that you get this because this is a solid foundation for you to deal with other stuff. And remember, in law, you're held to these things. Whether you're aware of it or not, or whether somebody tells you them or not, you will be held to these things and treated accordingly. Black. Characterized in some way by this color. Characterized by absence of light. Hence, having dark purposes. Malignant. Deadly. Baneful. Disastrous. Sinister. Foul. Iniquitous. Atrocious. Dismal, gloomy, and sad, of the countenance of darkness, black looking things, absence of consciousness, clouded with anger, threatening, boding ill, indicating disgrace, indicating censure, ETC, a color pertaining to objects, even in full light, absent of all light or moral goodness, shining destitute of light or incapable of reflecting it, devoid of color so dark as to have no distinguishable color. So therefore, black does not come in shades, does it? No. So can you have a light-skinned black girlfriend? No. It's the extreme of the color spectrum taught to you in the third grade and not part of the primary color spectrum whatsoever. Not considered a call at all. So there's no justification in using it, is it? No. Hold on. And also, having a very dark skin as Negroes or Negritos. All right? So now that's a brand that they put on you, but it's a prayer, isn't it? Yeah. It's a prayer, isn't it? And they cast that word out into ethers, and words have power, don't they? Yes, sir. Because first there was the word. Mm -hmm. And the word was with, and the word was. Mm -hmm. They have power, don't they? And it's a contract, isn't it? Because contracts are both oral, implied, and written. And all of them are enforceable. So what do you think happens both spiritually and politically when you project that on the civilized world and say that that's your identity? Because the words mean exactly what they mean. Don't they? As far as the world's concerned, because you're, you're responsible and you're not excused from the law because the law begins with yourself. And every human being on this planet is required by both divine law and civil law to honor their mothers and fathers. And we're the only one people who keep running around talking about human beings are crayons. And then when the world rejects us, we're going to accuse them of racism when race is the human species. They can't even damn read. See the problem? And they'll argue with you because that's a connotative application. But race is the species. Race is not the attitude. There's only one race on the planet. It's called the human race. And the human race has divided or extended families called nationality. And if you're not a part of families of nations, you're outside a human family, and whatever contract you may make will belong to whoever's name you sign. And if you're in a wardship status, that status remains unless you're national. And if you ever lost it, you must nationalize to get it back, because that's the only thing the civilized world recognizes. Now you understand why nobody wants to talk about little Raleigh? Huh? has nothing to do with belief, it has to do with political status, to change your political condition. Political, not what you believe. And so in an unabridged dictionary, you might have two or three full pages that may deal with certain key words in a social order that will give you the history of how it's used. This is why you want a quality dictionary. Are you, do you follow me? Now listen to this and keep and, and do use your pens. Right beneath black, you have your first compound word. And a compound word in grammatication is called a hybrid, mm -hmm. which is a heterogeneous use of words, which is more than one word put together to imply a different meaning. Alright? But notice what they use 
in the dictionary as the first use of it in a compound form. And this one is listed as a noun. And they know that these people were branded black, right? Mm -hmm. So look in the same dictionary, right? Right here, what's that word? And it breaks it down. Read it. It's black and, black and more. All right. Black and more. Say it loud. Black and more. Is it one word or is it two more words put together? <laughs> it's multiple words put together. <laughs> what matrix or part of speech? Now. And it's broken down and separated, ain't it? Yes, sir. And then it was a noun, isn't it? Yes, sir. So if black's an adjective, why is it now a noun? So a noun, person, place, thing, or idea. It's not an adjective, is it? Nope. So now, but yet it's a compound word, so it's clearly one more word put together, isn't it? Right. So now that's an adjective and a noun. Here, capital M, small o, small o, r. Here, all even case. And it says black plus more. Earlier form of more. And so these people who call themselves black are Moors. It's right there in the dictionary. They can't even damn read it. So what's it say right here? Read it out loud. A Negro, especially an African Negro. So these people think that Negroes are what? Especially an African Negro. Yes. So who are they? Any dark skinned person. Real, any very dark skinned person. Now a nickname. Also attributed white, black, etc. The Negroes which we call the Black Moors. It, so who, they ask who they are. Moors. What's that got to do with how they feel? What's that got to do with belief? What's that got to do with religion? That's their bloodline in an ordinary dictionary. They don't even know who the hell they are. They're going to tell you about Jesus, God, Allah, Moses, Muhammad, Salat, prayer, Mystery systems, Nibiru, 13th planet, <laughs> the fifth dimension, and don't even know the damn bloodline. See why nobody respects us? That's an Edelman degree. Third grade grammar. As simple as what I just said to you is what Malcolm found out. That's what that French Muslim had to school him when he went over there and made the Hodge and started that black and white stuff in that French Muslim school. And it's because you made the hives. Don't come with that white and black stuff. That's slave language. You think Maghrib's a prayer for Wednesday. Maghrib is North America. Morocco, the most extreme West. You left home. That's why when Malcolm came back, he understood. Enemies was on both sides. So now, Thanks. you understand the job of the so-called black leaders keeping the paradigm of this black thing going on and what the payoffs are all about because it makes the people non-descendable but they don't know about descendability because they don't know they have an estate do you see the whole point so this whole paradigm of this black thing is to keep us busy arguing stupid arguments and we're declared incompetent but we do it with passion don't we the reason why most people are people don't know because they weren't taught, not because they're dumb. But if, if you weren't taught, you don't know that you don't know. So a description of a thing is not an identity of the thing. Don't get that twisted. You got Asiatics who through their order of education actually believe that this complexion is black. They really do. And with the mind of a child, they can't tell the difference. And as a matter of fact, they think that black comes in shades. Yeah. They really do. And that's not making mockery. You have to understand the mentality of a people who have been mentally enslaved with etymology absent from their education. And all scholars know that. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? But scholars are excused because all scholars get an etymology degree. You must qualify if they have a title. This is why people outside of our communities don't have too much respect for black people because they know we sell outs. But they know most of the people don't have the intelligence to recognize a sellout. They go by their emotions, how they feel about them, not what they know, how they feel about them. Always emotions, no facts. Mm -hmm. You understand? Now, um, so I just wanted to show you that, mm -hmm. right? So you take a position like you don't know. Mm -hmm. 
and then see how easy it is to first bring a person to a consciousness of themselves. Right. You don't have to try to convince them, give them documents. Now, from here on in, if you continue in the civilized world and claim to be black, you willingly gave up your birthright, and by law, they have a right to do anything to you that they want to do to you. Because you're outside the human family, by choice. Now, um, so like when most of our people, you talk to most of our people, and they'll acknowledge Negro, Black, Color, Coon, Shine, Nigga, and don't know that they're all categorized as nom de gear. But if you say nom de gear, they wouldn't associate because they don't know that that's nom de gear, because they don't know better. But a scholar immediately knows they're nom de gear, and it's not even a debate. It's not even an issue with them. It's not like it's like saying to somebody, uh, two and two is four, and they, they got to go through some great effort. It's, it's not an issue. Mm -hmm. Two and two is four. Oh, all right, it's four. No big deal. To us, you ain't got to go through no spiritual definition of two and two is four. Black, Negro, color, they're nom de gear. That means they're pseudonyms that are put on people that have been denationalized. Anybody around the planet knows that. Our people don't know that. So therefore, here we are with this problem. And so now we're approaching people who have been subjugated to this mentality for generations, and it appears that you're either giving them something new or you're countering their beliefs when you're actually restoring something that already belonged to them, and they're the only ones that don't recognize it. So you can understand how the rest of the civilized world has problems with so-called black people because they don't know how to come at you. Because they don't know how you're going to respond. One minute you're sensitive, one minute you're supportive, you hurt each other with petty stuff, yet, yet evil stuff come to you from European policemen and stuff like that, stomp your babies, you know what I mean, rape your women, and you all march and pray. Brother, look at you wrong, you want to shoot them. You know, they know we have that mentality. You, you, because we're sick, but we don't know that we're sick. Mm -hmm. But anyway, getting back to point. Now, put yourself in another people's shoes. Now, you know very often we've been taken advantage of. I mean, it is mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. But when you understand this, you can understand why people, other people that sometimes confuses our people, why they don't like black people. They don't trust us. Because anybody that don't recognize their own bloodline yeah. can't be trusted. But our people who think it's an identity don't know that that's part of what that rejection is. They think part that rejection is what they have been trained as racism when it's actually rejection of people who are in dishonor and keep defending that dishonor and ignorance, which damages the world. But they don't see it that way. They just, we just look from the point that we're being put upon. That's like, like me trying to sell you here, I'm going, yeah, man, because I got this, uh, we got these pit bulls here, you know, they got their shots and everything, it's night blues and stuff like that, right? And we we, we, we we giving you a deal, right? <laughs> we usually want like seven, eight hundred for them. Mm -hmm. On the low end, you know, but we're going to give you a deal. We're going to give you a two or three, right? Come on, doggy. Mm -hmm. Put the dog up here. Yeah, we got this sale thing on. Go ahead, dog, do your thing. He goes, meow. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way the world looks at us calling ourselves Smith, Jones, and Johnson. And we don't see it. We think they're busting on us when they're looking at us as phony. But we, by not knowing basic etymology, we don't know that that's the major part of their approach to us. Now let's just, now show you know ordinary dictionary, right? So now let's go to a law dictionary, right? And then you'll see people you know, in the name of scholarship, talking about say, yeah, I and mean, we people of color, like we just said something deep and spiritual, right? This is really Afrocentric. And you know, people of color need to be treated with respect and, and all of this stuff. And, and wonder why people still reject us, right? <laughs> so let's go to law dictionary. We're talking about available reading, right? Mm -hmm. So, and let's look how, how simple stuff is. Now, check this out, good brother. Now this is a law dictionary of, look, now we have definitions of the terms. You say ID, identification, it says term, right? Terms and phrases of American and English jurisprudence, ancient and modern. So they can't get out of this, can they? Mm. Nope. 
All right, now let's go look at color. Now, with most of our people who can't read, they, they've been told by their black leader guys, <laughs> color coalition, people of color, and people need to recognize the brothers and we somebody and everything, because we people of color are spiritual, and the rest of the world looking at us like, yeah. And then we feel this, right? Let's see, now here it is. Now let's look at this. Color. By common usage in America. Does it say in the world? Common usage in America. Same thing the Frenchman told Il Malik. Mm -hmm. That people know as Malcolm. Right? This term. Does it say identity? Mm -hmm. It says this term, which is color, in such phrases as quote unquote colored persons, quote unquote the colored race, quote unquote colored man, and the like is used. To designate, does it say identify? It says designate Negroes or persons of the African race, including all persons of mixed blood descended from Negro ancestry, right? But where a state constitution provided for separate schools for the white and colored races, the term, it says term, quote unquote white race was held to be limited to the Caucasian race and the term colored races to embrace all other races, right? It has also been held that there is no legal technical significance to the phrase colored person which the courts are bound judicially to know. They're telling you it's a fraud. That's why nobody recognizes colored people, because it's a fraud, it's a brand. So when you come talking about freedom and liberties in a brand, you're a subject. You're another man's property. You ain't got no business talking trash. And our people have been told that that's spiritual committing development <laughs> of Hotep. Don't they? And defend it. Now, so let's look at color. So now that's color. That's, and they show you the term that's used in all the different phrases. They, they cut every way it was used socially, didn't they? So the people can't even say that, that they can't understand that. They can say they ain't read it. They can't say they can't understand it if they would read. But you have to understand educated people around the world just know these things. This is just basic education. So you already know the difficulty they must have trying to communicate with us. And we keep trying to be crayons. Do you understand? So let's look at color. Color and appearance, a semblance or simulacrum as distinguished from that which is real. A prima facie or apparent right, hence a deceptive appearance, a plausible assumed exterior concealing a lack of reality, a disguise or pretext. So what do you think when you be called, going out in the world calling yourself we people of color and then looking for respect? Because we was told by some marching, praying, Negro leader guy that is so Afrocentric identity and you just told the world that you are fake. Accept me. And then when you get rejected, you want to accuse them of racism. Do you see how obvious that is? Is that complex? Is it hard to understand? But you know, and I know most of our people in, who, who claim to read and claim to be scholars don't know it and don't speak of it. And try to defend it as if it's an identity. So imagine in your mind the difficulty it puts other people in to come in our communities and deal with us. They don't have no choice but to just set up a business because they can't do anything reasonable with us because we're going to get all emotional. We're going to be one thing one day, another thing another day. I mean, let's be real. So if we want to really solve problems, we've got to start be honest with ourselves. You know, like if, if I got a boogie in my nose, don't let me sit down at the dinner and everybody say, <laughs> yeah, man, you're looking, you're all right, man, yeah. And I'm, exactly. You know, it's, come on, man, go blow your nose. Mm -hmm. There's people sitting here eating, you know. And, and after a while, and this is an exaggeration, but in many ways, culturally, you know, people get to the point because they know how sensitive we are. They don't say anything. They just let us make asses out of ourselves. 
but they reject us also in the process, then we get insulted and we feel dissed. And I'm not knocking any of them, I'm just telling you, when you grow up, you, you, you're not dealing with belief systems, you deal with real politics. But because most people aren't willing to handle it, they don't usually talk to them because they get emotional. I mean, you saw like Jack Nicholson said in a couple of movies, say you, you know, the people don't want to know the truth, they can't handle the truth. What they're really mm -hmm. saying, not that they can't handle it, they don't want it. They talk about it, but they don't want it. You know, it's like people saying, you know, how come nobody comes in the community and help the brothers and sisters mm -hmm. and tell us the truth about our history and blah, blah, blah. I just showed you right there. And we ain't even been here a few minutes. So if these people don't know their wars, how they want to know their history? And then if you promote black, you're putting them right back in the Christian black codes, and then the codes fly, they get all screwed, and they wonder why we can't develop. And then we keep having meetings, rallies, doing things like this, films, and talking about pyramids and the great gods of Egypt and everything, and then they start trying to take that black stuff and make it retroactive. It's really, you know, it's really interesting. And just, you know, just like, and, and as we're talking, and it's because we're open in conversation, but most people ain't open to this conversation because they don't want to deal with facts. They get angry. It doesn't meet their beliefs because they don't deal with facts, don't come with the facts. You want an argument? You want to go to hell? And have, you know, fire and burn stones? Start talking facts. Let me just ask somebody that too. I said, where is hell to you? Like, do you think that you just, they put you in the ground and your body just absorbs down into the earth and down into fire and burn stones? No, 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 Shows you why people don't have respect for people who keep claiming to be black. And we be getting sensitive thinking that they off on us. They dissing us. And they're only being honest with us because we're out of order. You can't go to the grand party fart and expect people not, you know, to embrace you like you got Aramis <laughs> on or something. 